from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, whether you're a fan of theme parks or amusement parks or, bemu- you know, those old, the old amusement park, uh, it's time for, or you're bemused in a park or you're been bemused by my b- b- lack of snark. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that may or may not put you to sleep. Hey, everybody, before the show gets started here, I just want to let you know that Sleep With Me exists because of empathy and compassion. The, the empathy and compassion we all share from being in the deep, dark night, tossing and turning, the understanding that it can be painful. And sometimes that involves like bigger things than just our own sleep problems. And so if you're in your need, if, you, if, you, if you're in extra need right now, sorry, I had trouble speaking, but because I, I guess because I get tight sometimes because this really is important to me. Empathy and compassion, dignity and respect, and taking that extra step if you need extra help right now, and being a part of positive change. So there's links to organizations, you know, if you need extra help right now, there's links to organizations you can connect with right now. And if you want to be a part of positive change, say Black Lives Matter with your actions. Say stop AAPI hate with your actions. Be a part of positive change. There's links to resources right in our show notes. And these sponsors right here are what enable me to be here for you twice a week for free. Thanks. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots. And you've heard me with this Patreon pitch for years and years and years. If you've listened to the show, I've talked about the value of being a patron or the joy some patrons get by rebelliously giving back uh, and paying for a free sleep podcast. But over the last uh, couple of years, understandably, under the current conditions, we've uh, been getting less and less patrons, at least on the backside. And it's just something uh, I'm wondering if you're if you're a former patron or or you're not a patron, like what more, what might you be looking for? What Like what could I do? Like right now we have the ad-free shows at $5 a month. We have all the archives at $10 and $20 a month. $20 patrons get Ray episodes every single month. There's story only episodes, all intro episodes at $10 and up a month. And I guess I'm wondering from your perspective, is it my communication? Like what could we offer on the Patreon? Patreon, or how could I better communicate with you the value of being a member, of supporting the podcast, of paying for a free podcast so it's there whenever you need it? Like, how can I be clear or what am I missing? You say, wait a second, I, I want to ask you. And, and it, again, it's it, I know a lot of people aren't, a posi- aren't in a position to be a patron. Totally understand that. But if you are in a position to become a patron and you just said, Scoots, you know what? I never even looked at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Go over there, take a look, see what we offer, see if it interests you, and then say, you know what, if you did this or you offered that or you had this as an option, you know, we added the the annual subscription so you could get a free month. Check out our Patreon and let me know what's missing. I guess it's that simple. Let me know what more I can add or what I could change up or how I can better communicate the value of being a patron. Go over there and let me know. Give me some honest feedback at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron and check it out. Let me know about it. I'll really appreciate it. And Maybe I can make some changes and get some more listeners involved. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, I've talked about my own journey with my own mental health, my own use of a licensed professional therapist, because I, I guess I want to normalize it for you and say, yeah, it's not easy. 2020 and 2021 have not been easy. But I want to empower you to take steps to take care of yourself, whether you're feeling depressed, you're struggling with your relationships, you're having difficulty sleeping, meeting your goals. Tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp, offers online professional counselors who can listen and help. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log 
log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. In that way, you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And people close to me, people in my personal life have utilized the services of BetterHelp and they are really happy with it. And our podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. Visit better help.com slash sleep with me. That's better H E L P.com slash sleep with me and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced better help professional. Thanks everybody. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. If you tried the Name Your Price tool yet, it works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The one part of the podcast I hear, I need you to hear. It's where I pop my peas, if you please. It's where I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. And that's how I'm able to be here for you free twice a week. And I want to thank Rachel, who supported Bombas, and Stephanie, who supported Literati. Those are two sponsors that just kind of finished up the run. They're probably reassessing. So if you supported Bombas or Literati, please, please let them know about about it or any other sponsor. It's a key thing so they know their smart partnership is valuable is using our code, using our link, and then letting them know about it again. That way they know, wow, these people really care that we support this podcast and that's what makes them stick around. So please, if you supported Literati or Bombas or any other sponsor, let them know about it. Be like Rachel, be like Stephanie, let them know about it, let me know about it, and I could try to thank you here on the Sloop supporter zone and if you fill out the form at sleepingmepodcast.com slash sponsors and let the sponsor know about it I could send you some stickers uh, just like Rachel and Stephanie next month thanks second part of the sleepy supporter zone is you getting the support you need if you're in extra need right now there's links to resources you can use right in the show notes it's also about supporting the members of our community saying black lives matter saying stop AAPI hate it's about taking action to be a part of positive change and one of the organizations I support, uh, thanks to listeners who let me know about it, is 1000 Women Strong on uh, Instagram and, and on uh, Twitter. You could go to 1K Women Strong. Uh, 1000 Women Strong is a national national constituency platform centered around the civic and communal progress and advancement of black women. And they have webinars going and more information. And you could either check them out on social media or use the link I'll post in our show notes. And that is the end of the sleep. Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bart, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are it's they? Posty Poster Zone. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Carl too. W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Write us down. Or on the website. I am the Mystery Bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support your scooter on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud that we could dance Rusty Biscuit, Lois, and a little banana. Leah does the transcripts. Thanks, Mystery Bard. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show?
Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bed night, bed, bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts, you know, things you're thinking about on your mind, uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, anything you're feeling emotionally uh, on the inside or the outside, uh, physical sensations, uh, changes in time, temperature, routine, work schedule, Oh boy, do I love uh, helping everybody who's having a change in uh, work. You know, like I said, I'm trying to give glory to the 6th, 7th, and 8th, and ninth, and 10th shifts. I've recently learned by, through my imagination that there's even work shifts that are in the Roman numerals. So the IV shift, uh, the, the 3I shift, the V shift... Uh, those may not be actually real shifts, but to me they are because if, if whatever's keeping you awake, I guess I'd like to take your mind off that and keep you company while you fall asleep. Now, this a uh, couple of things to know if you're new. Oh, how am I going to do it? You're right. How how are you? How do I propose to do it? What I'll do is I'll send my voice across the deep dark night here. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones. Those are cre- creaky dulcets. Uh, a bit like, uh, you know, sounds, those like those bugs you hear in the summertime that are nice. But they, like, I think those are called, I don't know. I don't know what they're called. I'm sorry. I don't even know if they're B-U-G-S's. Uh, but they make a noise that uh, you hear when you're in a grassy area. Different from like crickets or things, it like makes this like humming sound. It, that's what creaky dulcet tones kind of sound like. And that's another sound I love, uh, but I don't always appreciate. You say, wow, I didn't realize that added a soothing mix to summertime. I forget the, what the bugs are called. I want to say acacia, but I think that's a kind of tree. And Arcadia is like a place, so... But you know those, you know the ones that they're they're, they're kind of humming, and it's like, is that like one billion uh, beings singing in unison? And the, the and then you're like, have they been singing the whole time, or and I just was aware of it, or does it come and it go? And it's really hard to track. That's kind of like how listening to this podcast is. And then you may even say, do I even love that noise, or is it, is it am I starting to not love it? Uh, but whatever it is, I'm glad you're here, and I'm here to keep you company while you fall asleep. So I'll, I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night, lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders. We've been on a few already in superfluous tangents. All in the spirit to keep you company while you drift off, uh, to take your mind off of stuff uh, while you fall asleep, ideally. Now, if you're new, a few things to know. This uh, that uh, like uh, like regular listeners tell me all the time, and my regular listeners, how you doing? Uh, good evening. You know what I'm talking about. Like I am like that thing, or other sounds like wind in the trees. That's another sound. You see, wow, that's beautiful. Wait a second. Did it, is it? Then you kind of forget about it, and. Uh, and they say, whoa, boy, that's a nice sound, that wind in the trees in a distance. And then you forget about it again. It's, and it is one of those things that say, is it there all the time? Or am I just appreciate? I mean, I guess the wind, they'd say, and the, the other the beings, they'd say, no, we're not there all the time. But we'd appreciate it if you did appreciate us. I say, okay, that's on my to-do list now. My, to, my desire list, actually. I desire to appreciate you both more. Uh, trying to use I state. I, mean, I don't know how to use an I statement yet, but I do desire to, to uh, appreciate your sounds more in mo- and live in the moment. I definitely desire that. And I will nod in appreciation 
so so if I, if you see me if you see me pacing around whether you're making wind sounds or that wonderful buzzing noise you make uh or you see me do, like uh, thinking that may be a sign I'm appreciating your sound that eventually I appreciate your sounds Okay, so back to the new listeners, though. So that was a, a superfluous tangent, I think. So new listeners, a few things to know up front. I'm really glad you're here. And I'm so glad you're here. I want to be straightforward with you and kind of give you a little bit of an overview uh, to try to make you feel comfortable. So this podcast, the first thing, the first way to make you feel comfortable is like if you're feeling strange or you're not sure or you're skeptical about this show, that's totally normal. That's how most people arrive at this podcast. Because maybe you heard about it from somebody or you saw it somewhere and you say, wait a second, so what is that? It's a dude talking you to sleep about nothing but kind of about something. And someone might have said, yeah, it totally works for me. Uh, but it's a bit different. You say, well, yeah, it's different. I'm listening right now, and uh, I'm not sure about this. That's really normal. And that's how most listeners' uh, relationship with the show begins. You say, I'm not so sure about this. So give it a few tries. Like, I'm just not everybody's cup of tea. But for most people, they realize it takes just a little bit of while to get used to how the show works. Because in some sense, it kind of works in the background. That's the next thing you need to know is that uh, this is a podcast you don't really listen to. You just kind of barely pay attention to it uh, or keep it out of focus. That you, you can listen, but you don't necessarily, you shouldn't feel any pressure to pay attention or, or you know, you know what I mean? Like, or be like, if you're waiting around for it to get started and make sense, I guess that's the thing. It, it really does. It really never gets there. So kind of sit back, just like you're looking at clouds or listening to wind or, you know, those, our forest friends. In a way, those two things, you know what I love? You know what I love about you, forest friends and wind in the trees? You, you don't really ask a lot of, of me. You say, hey, you did this time. You said, hey, could you appreciate me more? And I said, yeah, totally. I'd like to. And then you said in my brain, well, that's that's kind of not. And I said, yeah, no, I'll do my best uh, to, to appreciate you more. I appreciate you. I'm saying that. I say I got to do a better job of expressing my appreciation. Uh, but for me, there's, I mean, that's pretty low pressure anyway. Me, that's even lo- lower pressure. You just got to play the podcast. You could put it on a sleep timer or you could, uh, you know, just play it all night or see how it goes. So it's a podcast you don't really listen to. It's also a sleep podcast that doesn't put you to sleep. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar cuz, your boar sib, your boar bestie. I'm here to keep you company while you fall asleep and take your mind off stuff. So I'm here to be here for you, uh, to barely pay attention to while you fall asleep. That's why the shows are over an hour, so you have plenty of time to drift off and... You don't have to wonder when the show's going to stop or if you're going to be asleep by then. But also, if you can't sleep, I want to provide reassurance that I'm going to be here to keep you company with my nonsense and my friendly rambling. I'm here for you uh, to, to keep you company. So that's a, that's a, so podcast you don't listen to, pod, sleep podcast you don't really f- fall asleep to. And most people don't like it on the first listen. So those are the, those are some things you, you wanted you to know. The other things I want you to know is the structure of the show is also very different. The uh, show starts off with a few, like a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, theme park fans or whatever I said, so that you feel welcome and invited in, in scene. Then there's business. That's how the podcast comes out twice a week for free. Then there's an intro, which we're in. We're about 10 minutes into the intro or something, maybe eight minutes. I just looked at my clock. But uh, the intro is somewhere, it takes somewhere around 12 to 20 minutes of uh, introducing the show, which is very counterintuitive. You say, okay, what I don't understand. But I say, okay, well, I, like, I try to introduce a show to new people, but it takes me forever to get to any points. 
but the intro also serves a purpose to to let the sunset. Uh, the, the, and I'm not talking about the physical sunset, but you know the sunset that's kind of keeping us up uh, to let the day fade away and to give you some wind down time. So some people listen while they're in bed, getting comfortable, drifting off. And a lot of listeners listen as they're getting ready for bed. But there's and there's no wrong way to listen. Three percent of people skip the skip ahead. And start the show at 20 minutes. And then some people set their sleep timers. This doesn't have to do with the intro, but I I think it's around the same thing. Like 2% of people set a sleep timer for 30 minutes. 2% of people set it for 45. And then I have no idea how many people set it for 60. Maybe another 8% of people. So you could kind of see as you begin to listen to the show, there's people that listen all night. Uh, There's people that listen on Patreon to story-only episodes. There's people that listen on Patreon to all intro episodes. So at first, just kind of see how it goes. But the purpose of the intro is to ease you into bedtime. And uh, because for me, I've just never been able to instantly fall asleep. And and the few times that does happen, it's like I'm asleep for three minutes. And then it's like, was I just asleep? Oh, And then my brain's like, by the way, did you notice we weren't comfortable in bed? I said, well, I looked pretty comfortable. Those three minutes I was asleep. I fell right asleep. And, uh, and that, you know, I, I don't know. It's just another one of those things that happens to me to keep me in touch with the podcast. It's, that happened last night. And I think the night before too, I said, wait a second. I felt right. As, uh, it, like I was so tired. And then, uh, I don't know. Those are the kind of things you just have to throw your hands up at. You say, what the heck? What do you mean? I'm not comfortable. I just fell asleep. Like, there's a part of me that's constantly complete. Like, would you believe this uh, temperature you got the room at? Would you believe the pillows or you have your own pillows in your wrong positions? And I say, I don't understand. Like, I was just sound asleep for three minutes only. And uh, uh, couldn't we have just stayed? Couldn't we have just stayed asleep? We seemed pretty comfortable earlier. Nah, we weren't comfortable. You're you're just uh, you just don't know what you're doing. That's so much sleep advice it has that undertone. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. I mean, so much advice in general. That's why ideally I try not to give advice to say, well, you just don't know what you're doing. Obviously, you're doing it wrong. And I said, well, I, how, how is I doing it wrong, though? Because we, we did fall asleep. We just didn't stay asleep. And say, exactly. Exactly my point. Uh, that's why we need to make some adjustments around here. I was asleep too until I realized it. I say, thank goodness I got you on my side. Uh, I, I wish I could say where you've been all my life, but I know where you've been right there at the forefront of my mind. Okay, that was a bit of a tangent, but that's that, that kind of goes into another thing, which I'll talk about in a minute. But so the intro is to give you some space. Uh, and to ease you into bedtime. And ideally, what I found for me at least is having a bedtime routine, despite all those ups and downs I have, uh, gives me the best chance to get a good night's sleep and having a wind down. And so I hope for some of you, the podcast becomes part of a, like a layered wind down, whatever else you're doing. Uh, you could be like, you know, polishing shoes or something you know, uh, looking at, you know, the pic- pictures in a magazine, anything, you know, doodling, may, you know, remaking your bed. Uh, that's another thing I've done, been doing lately is, uh, well, why don't I go another tangent about uh, I, what I've been doing is every few days, because I have now, I have two, because it's wintertime when I'm recording this, which you probably won't be when you're hearing this, but uh, so I'd gotten a weighted comforter for the holidays and then I have a regular comforter because I like my room obviously very cold. And so, and those both have duvet covers on them. So what I'll do is, because I do so much tossing and turning, is uh, then my duvets, even with ropes or whatever's in there, they get thrown out, thrown out of whack, as, as you say in the official duvet business. And so then I just, I have to, I, what I do is I just flip my duvets over. So I go from, I, this may be breaking a major rule from, you know, international duvet etiquette. So I won't get, I, I won't ever win that award anymore. 
but I'll take my bottom of my duvet. It's the old bag. I put the back end of my duvet right up in my face. Uh, double, two back ends of duvet covers right in my face. It doesn't bother me one bit uh, because then I'll do so much tossing and turning that it'll reset. It, like my duvets will be bottom heavy. Then three days later, my duvets will be top heavy again. And it really works. Uh, and that actually, I th- I've talked about this before, like years ago, I can remember like that uh, remaking my bed has become part, is part of my wind down routine. It really is. And puffing the old pillows and stuff. So I hope the intro can be part of that for you and ease you into bedtime is my point. Then there's business after the intro. That's like where podcast uh, advertisers like their business at the mid roll which is just what they call it. It just means a third of the way into the show or something. Uh, then after that is uh, our bedtime story, which tonight will be a visit from my neighbor Ray, most popular guest we have, uh, so that'll be nice. I, I'm not saying that sarcastically. I'm just uh, like uh, the Ray is like that's all true. So then, And then there's thank yous at the end of the show. So that's the structure of the show. And I think we kind of got to the reason I make the show, which is pretty clear, too. I make the show because I've been there. Tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting asleep, trouble staying asleep, trouble waking up early, you know, all that stuff. I I deal with it. And so if I can help, it would really be my honor is is to, to help you out and take your mind off stuff and keep you company while you drift off. The other side of it is uh, that you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place of respite. You deserve a bedtime that you could look forward to or at least feel good about instead of dreading like I have in the past. Like if you can just at least have that same, well, I got the Sleep With Me podcast. So, you know, if I, if I do wake up after three minutes, I could put that back on or, oh, I have it on. So now I can listen in what Scooter's talking about and it won't make any sense and I don't really have to listen, and it's pleasant enough uh, to, to keep me company. So I hope I can help you fall asleep. Now, like I said, it doesn't work for everybody, but not only do you deserve a good night's sleep, it's my belief. It's not a belief. It's true. Our world is a better place with you rested because you can live a more fuller life, and that impacts everybody in a small way. I, I really do. I don't believe it. I know it. And I know you deserve a good night's sleep. And this that's why I say this is an honor for me to make the show. I really appreciate you checking it out. I really hope I yearn and I strive to help you fall asleep. I work really hard on the show. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to do it for you twice a week. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Brooklinen. And let me ask you a question. Do you remember how long you've had the sheets you're going to sleep in tonight? And like how many times you've washed them? Like, have you had those sheets since college? Are they the kind of sheets you just kind of keep washing over and over and over again, almost mindlessly? But you say, I don't even know if I like these sheets. In fact, I'm positive I don't like them. Well, let's put a stop to that. If you've been listening to the show for a while, you know, I've been sleeping in Brooklyn. Brooklyn and bedding for years and years and years. And I've been telling this over and over again. It's time to treat yourself to some new sheets. It's going to change the way you sleep. It's going to change the way you feel about your bedroom because you're going to be proud to have guests over. You say, mom, check out this duvet. Check out the pillowcases. Check out the sheets. And then you're going to be happy because you saved money. Brooklyn and was created to create beautiful, high quality home essentials that don't have that luxury markup. They've been so successful because Brooklyn and works directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without those luxury level markups. So you get their amazing array of products at a reasonable price. And they have something for every comfort need. It's not just a bedroom. They have amazing towels. I love their super plush towels, robes, comfy loungewear. And they're launching new products all the time. And I love getting their email and seeing the new prints they have. And they got those buttery, soft, breathable sheets. And they're so 
confident in their core products that they come with a 365-day warranty. And their customers love them, too. They've received over 75,000-plus five-star reviews and counting. They have amazing customer service. So give yourself the comfort refresh you deserve and get it for less at Brooklyn. And go to brooklinen.com and use the promo code Sleep with me, one word sleep with me to get $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's Brooklyn and B R O O K L I N E N dot com. And use that promo code sleep with me for $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's Brooklyn and dot com. And use that promo code sleep with me. Thanks, everybody. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Are you thinking more about how to tighten up your budget these days? Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average. And customers can qualify for an average of six discounts when they sign up. A little off your rate each month goes a long way. Get a quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed in 2020. Potential savings will vary. Discounts vary and are not available in all states and situations. All right, everybody. This is Scooter, uh, obviously, and uh, this is a a guest episode from our most popular guest, Ray Perkins, my neighbor. And, you know, it doesn't mean Ray has to be most popular in your heart. He's not trying to be popular. I think that's why he's so popular. And, you know, that's just the way it works. Uh, but so Ray Perkins is a neighbor of mine. He's been my neighbor in two different apartments, believe it or not. He moved, I moved and he moved, uh, but he's my friend and he's a, he's a gentleman who's older in age than me. Uh, and so we're not of the same generation, but we've become friends because Ray, first of all, Ray's the most adjusted, well-adjusted person I've ever met. He's very kind. He's very outgoing, optimistic, pleasant. You know, he's not perfect, even though he comes, you know, on the podcast, he definitely comes across pretty great. Uh, he, uh, but he, he's really great. He's a really great person, and uh, he's really into Disney uh, theme parks in general, but Disney theme parks. So he goes along on our trips. And when I'm recording this, it's been a long time, at least anybody in my life's taken a trip. Uh, but uh, So I'm recording this. This is an interesting setup because I'm recording this in January 2021 about a trip that happened in 2019, uh, of all things. Uh, that was, But Ray recorded the last episode of this trip in, in January of 2020. And then we took a break from this content, but Ray's popular, and we just aired the first episode of Ray's trip, and then I listened to the second episode to get back to where we were. But I also think for Sleep With Me, this is a kind of fertile exploration when you get into memory and experience uh, and my handwriting and my notes from the trip. So it's going to be interesting, I think. Uh, And so Ray will talk about our trip that we took together I think that's it. He kind of like, uh, I think that's it. He'll set everything else up, but this is Ray Perkins, my neighbor. Hello, 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 everybody. This is your friend Ray. So good to be here in your ears. Oh boy. Am I glad to be here talking to all of you. I'm glad to be talking to you, my friend. You're my friend. And, uh, you know, I know that means a little something different, uh, you know, because we're on the internet or wherever we are, ones and zeros and such things. But my friends beyond the binary, my ladies, my gentlemen, my boys, my girls, everybody out there, I'm here to talk to you about a little trip we took. And it, like Scooter said, it's going to be interesting because it's been a long time. It's been almost a year. I think it's been 10 days or nine days short of a year that I recorded this last episode. So looking back on it, I say, okay, and I haven't taken any trips. You know, Ray's been here. I've been taking, you know, I've been doing my thing locally and at my home. And I missed, you know, I missed the traveling, but, you know, we'll get back to traveling soon. Maybe the next time you hear me, you'll have gotten more info. But I think I'm going to record one more episode from this trip uh, for the public feed and then keep going for all your patrons out there. 
So the next time the public hears it, you'll probably hear one more episode of my current trip here. And then hopefully then the next time you hear me after that, you'll hear me on a, a future trip. That'll be a past trip. That's exciting. Time travel is exciting. But I know these episodes get spread out, so I want to set everything up for you. And, wow, things have changed a bit. But so Scooter and I and his little one, who's not so little at the time, she was, oh, boy, now I'm getting mixed up, 12. Uh, when you hear this, she'll be like a 14 or 15-year-old. Uh, but uh, she was 12. It was a, w- w- the holiday season of 2019. And we traveled to Orlando. And I know, again, I like to say, say, you don't have to like Orlando or theme parks. That's okay. I'll tell, I mean, I'm going to talk about that, but uh, it's okay not to like them. And Ray realizes, you know, I'm a person of privilege. And one of my privileges, you know, among all the other ones uh, th- is that I have an opportunity to go do this. So I understand that it's not an opportunity everyone has. And it is something I plan for. It is my one indulgence is going to these Disney parks. I don't really, I don't have any other indulgences uh, other than talking, uh, talking, you, Scooter says you're talking my ear off, Ray. Ray, I'm, I'm, I'm th- I need, I got stuff I got to think about right now. So there's another indulgence. I say, how's your day? Tell me about your day. Oh boy, Scooter. Never seen that shirt before, before yesterday. But, you know, I'm wearing, you know, it's in 2020 and uh, even the beginning of 2021, we're dressing comfortable. You know, I do change my clothes, but I I, I don't know. Is anybody else, was anybody else now that you're looking back at it, hopefully? Do, do you live out of, of a, not a waste basket, uh, but uh, your clothes hamper? Because I say, wow, those are my comfy pants. I have, now I have enough comfy pants in rotation. Oh, have you seen Scooter in his... Uh, his yoga pants from Sweaty Betty, they are really cozy. But so, okay, so that's our trip. And now we went there and we were staying at the Walt Disney World Resort, Port Orleans Hotel. And we, I don't know when we got there, it was episode one, when we got there early in the morning. And then we went to some parks and we did some things and then... We took a nap, and then we got up, and we did some things, and then we went to bed. And then the next day, day two, we went to the Disney Studios for the morning, very, very early in the morning, and spent the day, the, the morning there. Then we did some touring around, and then we did some napping, and I think I took about a two-hour nap. Scooter took an hour nap. We were watching the Disney Channel together. That was fun. While we were like winding down for our naps. And uh, so we woke up in a hotel at the Port Orleans. And I don't know if I talked about this. Our room is was really close to the bus stop and the place where Scooter would get his sodas. Uh, but really close. So we would go out of our room. You could go. Now, the Port Orleans is a bit like a mo. It's a motel themed after New Orleans. Uh, like when I say motel, I just mean there's no interior hallways, uh, which is it's a very nice place. As at the time I'm talking about, this is not open. But so we would go out our room. We'd go down one set of stairs, two sets of stairs. I can't remember. And we would go through a courtyard, then through the employee parking lot, uh, and then we would get into the bus stop through the back way there. And great thanks to Lentest and Touring Plans for recommending the, that block of area of rooms uh, for ver- being very convenient. And again, this is a new tip, I would say. You know, the touring plans has it. Now, Disney does not guarantee anything. You know, as much as I love going to the parks, you know, they're a corporation. And they, you know, they, they have, uh, I would not, they have good customer service, but they, I don't think they let their employees have a lot of freedom of choice as far as choosing to give you things or promise things because they're doing things on such a massive scale. But you can request a room or room location. And I, I, I guess your friend Ray would say the closer you could get to the bus stop, because you're going to be taking a bus a lot unless you drove or something, 
And I would also say, you know, there's people that poo-poo the buses, and you do have to plan it in, and it does have some level of inconvenience at times. But not having to drive or park the car, uh, there, there is a, and there is a fun thing. I don't know. There's moments on the bus you don't get anywhere else. I mean, you could say that anywhere in the world, I assume. Now, we had a little situation here. And I'm going on Scooter's notes and then what my memory can remember, which is not, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what my memory's going to remember from this. uh, But it says 447 was when we were done with our naps, we were going to go back to the, we were going to go to the Magic Kingdom, which is like a bit like Disneyland. And we're at the bus stop waiting for the bus, but it was running late and Scooter had to go to the bathroom, which is not a good idea. You say, well, we're already waiting for the bus, Scooter. So he ran off to the restroom, made it back. Uh, He put a note here about a 14-year-old kid with no magic band, but I don't know what that means. Uh, It doesn't remind me of anything. Uh, Then we went into the Magic Kingdom Park, and one of the people we were with wanted a Starbucks, uh, and the Starbucks line was very, 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 very long. So we did not do that. Then the next thing we did was we mobile ordered our food. So you go on your application there on your phone. You you find a place. Oh, where do you want to eat? Because and Scooter's really good about these kind of things. Uh, I know he could rock the boat or, or like wear thin, but he's very okay. Where do you want to eat? Uh, let's decide where we're going to eat and and order the food because we didn't have any other set plans. And it was a dinner time at this point, probably was at least five 15. And so we, uh, ordered, uh, from Pecos, Pecos, Pecos bill, Pecos bill, which is like a a Tex-Mex type, Tex-Mex type place. Uh, and it looks like we got nachos in a carnitas bowl. And they have, like, a nice place where you could serve yourself. So I'm sure that, like, where you can get more sour cream and those kind of things. Uh, Then it says we tried to watch the Castle Show, uh, which I I don't know what that means. I think we, like, it was too busy or something to have show, you know, dancing in front of the castle. And then it says delay, but it's not connected. It says, you tried to watch Castle Show delay, Seven Dwarves Mine Ride. So I think what probably happened, I don't know. We'll see what the next page notes, cause, but uh, that uh, either we, we the, the Castle Show was delayed or the mine ride was delayed because it was a drizzly little trip there. Now, there's also this big dis- disappointment there because, uh, so let me see how I explain all this thing. So this was December 23rd. I don't know why, uh, but so Scooter, uh, I don't know what happened. He he was really looking forward uh, to having an eggnog ice cream shake, uh, and they did not have it. Uh, and they had like they had had it the day before. Was that when we we went there the day before? Well, we were already back for 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 the. But he he didn't get it because he said, hey, "Well, I'm not hungry for ice cream right now." Because, you know, we'd been up all night. Uh, And so he went to the, he said, well, I'm ready for my ice cream milkshake now. But they did not have it. And so he was a bit let down. So that would make sense. We ate at that place. Then we walked to the castle show. Wasn't going on. Then the Seven Dwarfs Mine Ride, maybe it wasn't working or something. And we had a, a fast pass, I'm guessing. And uh, then we went and got, uh, Scooter said, well, I want to get my eggnog ice cream shake. Uh, and then he went to the ice cream place that was supposed to have it. And they said, oh, no, no, we don't have it anymore. That was just for the holidays. And Scooter said, well, it's December 23rd. And then they said, well, we normally have it uh, for just the, uh, I don't know if this is what happened, though. The, this happened over the trip, though. So I might, I might as well tell you now. They say, oh, well, we have a Mickey's party. But this isn't the Mickey's party. So, yeah, only when there's the Mickey's party do we have the, uh, the, the, the eggnog milkshake. And Scooter said, well, he had it yesterday. And they said, yeah, because we had a party scheduled for it. So we were serving it already. And I think Scooter even said, bah humbug, bah humbug or something. Uh, 
Okay, then, and we do take note of when, how many times Scooter goes to the restroom. I wasn't keeping track of how many sodas he had, because once you're in the park, sodas are too expensive for Scooter to drink uh, regularly. But we went and saw the whole of President's show, and that that's always good to see, uh, and I hopefully Lynn, Lynn, Lynn and, and, uh, and uh, Weird Al are working on a new version of it, I heard. So that would be cool. Scooter also went to the restroom, which is, uh, now I'm trying to think whether the restroom is around there. I think it's, uh, it's a little bit hidden, uh, because I think there's like some sort of customer service center over there and either the restrooms in there, it's behind it. Cause I'm, I'm can't picture where Scooter went. I mean, he went to the restroom in a restroom, obviously. And then we had, uh, Oh boy! So this is this was good times. Uh, so we went, then we went on Splash Mountain, which they're hopefully retheming for Tiana and Princess and the Frog. But they'll keep the drop there, for, so it'll splash either way. And we had Fast Pass for for that and Thunder Mountain, which is right next door. First, it's the Splash Mountain, then it's the Thunder Mountain. And it was dark, so it's always fun to ride on these rides when it's dark out. It, like, the Thunder Mountain is a woo-woo-wee. So that was fun. Then uh, we got some popcorn. Uh, we, all, we walked all the way back there, I'm assuming, back by uh, the President's Hall. And Scooter, now Scooter loves this thing. I think, I've, I don't know if we've talked about it before. And we had to do, we fought, like, so we couldn't get his eggnog milkshake. So he was a little bit sad. But he loves, they have a churro sundae. It's actually a churro ice cream sandwich, though it says churro sundae on here. So it's like a, a churro, like a cookie that's like a churro. And then another, then some ice cream and then a churro. And we've probably talked about it before. And so it's got a cinnamon sugar taste. And Scooter always thought that the ice cream was cinnamon, but I think this time it said it was uh, vanilla. But there's so much cinnamon sugar on the churros that the ice cream tastes like cinnamon sugar. And he del- he loves that sundae or that sandwich, and it was good. So Scooter was then happy again, but he said, well, I would have liked to have that eggnog milkshake, but uh, you can't have everything, you know? And I said, don't we know it, Scooter? So then we went on, now they have these special holiday rides when they're having their little Mickey party, Mickey's holiday party or something. And I never been to it. Maybe one day I'll go. But this is like a tip. It really doesn't save you money. But so that's a separate ticket thing they have at night at the Magic Kingdom over the holiday season, which they consider the day after Halloween. Uh, They start selling tickets to this Mickey's holiday party. And I don't know how much it costs, but you got to pay extra. Let's say it's $100. I, I'm, I'm guessing it's somewhere between $75 and $150. And you know your friend Ray. You know, I'm not, you know, I do plan for these things, but I say I, I got to pay. I already paid to get into the park during the day. Uh, hello. So you want me to, so that's why I haven't been. I've been to a Halloween one at Disneyland, and I'd like to go again. And not that I wouldn't want to go to this party. But here's the tip that I got from someone a long time ago, and I probably already shared it at some point. If you go during the week of the holidays, they have all the holiday stuff except for the eggnog milkshake, apparently. Uh, there, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like, so they have all these special things. So I, get, I don't think we've covered them yet. And the first one was this Jingle Cruise. So they have the Jungle Cruise. And this is the Jingle Cruise, which means that uh, everything's decorated, but they also have like a little special holiday songs playing. And the, uh, what do they call them? Scout Coteers? Uh, jungle uh, Skippers. So the Skippers have like a more, they have a different monologue that they make about the holidays. And it was fun. It was nice. Uh, we had fun at that. Uh, and it was cool to have to say, oh, this is unique uh, for the holiday season. So that was the Jingle Cruise. Then we went on the Swiss Family uh, Treehouse. Probably only uh, Scooter and his daughter and I. Uh, which uh, kids love it. Uh, even a 12, 13-year-old says, well, let's go. Let's climb through here. 
But you get really good views from that. So this is a pro tip. You can, I don't think you can watch the fireworks from there. We always say, let's try to watch the fireworks from the, the treehouse. But we never managed to do that. Uh, then we went to Small World. It's a small world after all. And that's a nice little ride. And, and I don't, I don't, they, at Disneyland, they have a holiday small, it's a, a holiday small world or something. But I, I don't think at Disney World they do. And then we went to a, so then this is the time of night when it's pretty busy, right? And this is a time of year where it's very v- busy as well. So you got to kind of be open to going on stuff. Uh, if you want to go on rides, you got to pick and choose your rides. But actually, because it was, I don't, I don't know, it was getting uh, cleared out. So we went on Phil Hall Magic, Phil Hall Magic, which is a, a 3D movie with like Donald Duck causes all this trouble. A spoiler alert. Uh, that was a joke. Your friend Ray was joke. I mean, I was telling the truth, though. Donald Duck causes all this trouble. He gets into an argument with all these magical instruments or something. And he has adventures because I think he got him and a flute got into a disagreement, and then the flute. Oh no, he lost a magic hat. And then Mickey, of course, has to save the day. But it's all in three D, so that was nice. And then we went on Dumbo. A scooter and his actually, I didn't go on Dumbo. Scooter and his daughter went on Dumbo, which is like a little spinner ride. But they have two of them now, so the weight is not that bad. And then right when they got done with Dumbo, was the fireworks for the night. And this was a more quiet part of the park over there, so we sat there and watched the fireworks. Now Scooter did lose his water bottle. I think his daughter had a drink and maybe she put it down and maybe it fell out of the backpack, but we never saw that water bottle again. But, you know, you you, you, you have some water bottles. I mean, everybody's giving those things away. It was a good one. It was from Monoprice. And so I said, Scooter, you know, you could just go back to Monoprice and get another water bottle. But he said, eh, well, you know. So he was a little distracted from that. Uh, so, uh, but but we, 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 no big deal. We did check in later on the trip uh, at the Lost and Found, but it was not found. But when we retraced our steps, we said it's probably where where I went missing. Though it could have gone missing on a bus. Uh, but we remember drinking water, watching the fireworks. That's what I was saying. Okay, then we went on the Autotopia Speedway. The Tomorrowland Speedway, I think is what they call it. This again had another Christmas show, a Christmas holiday theme to it. And I think this was new. It was cool, too. It had uh, music, like very spacey holiday tunes, and then uh, different things that were lit up. Uh, So it just made something fun. I mean, that's kind of a ride, no offense, it's a little bit past its prime, and could use a new, it's a, it's such a long, wide uh, swath of territory. But it was fun. We liked it. Then we went and said, uh, what does that even say, Scooter? I know, oh, Coke, Coke, is that what that says? Uh, but he, we got a pretzel, uh, but I can't see this thing. It looks like it says S-O-L-E-H-O. Soothe, uh, it could say Coke bottle. I don't think Scooter would have a Coke at that late at night, though. So a pretzel and a colette, uh, solette, uh, I don't know. Maybe they had something else from there. It definitely is S-O-L-E-T-T-E, but I, I don't, so I don't know. Maybe there's something else there. I don't think there's any ride over there that it would be shorthand for. Then we watched... Go home? No. Soli lol? I don't know. But we had a, a, you know, a soft pretzel. And then we watched the Castle Projection Show where they projected. Now, this is impressive. They project these, uh, the, what do they call it? Um, d- digital projection mapping. And that was exciting. Oh, boy. They really did it up. Uh, the castle was like a holiday show. It was really beautiful. And you're able to do that on the street there, on the main street. Uh, And then we were able to say, okay, let's go home now. 
And as your friend Ray says, and you know, this is where people could have uh, high temperatures and things, but we were able to catch a bus. Uh, now, sometimes you got to wait for your bus. You do have to walk a little bit to get to your bus. But when we got there, now, and the other thing is when you get to the beginning of the bus stops uh, or the bus depot, we'll call it, you can't, you can see the other stops and you can kind of say, is that my stop for my hotel? Is there a bus there? So what Scooter will do is try to guess, and then he'll try to walk. He doesn't like to run because you're not supposed to run. But I think he did some fast walking, and it was the bus uh, for our hotel. And we caught it, and we got on there, and it was 1130, and we headed home. So that's exciting. And then the next day was Christmas Eve. Oh, boy. Now, this was another one. Now, we got to sleep in. We were, I don't know. We must have got up about 7.30, 7.45. And we caught a bus to the Epcot Center, which I presume would open at 8 o'clock uh, or 9 o'clock. And we split up because you have your bag there, and they have to check, you know, your, your bag, and they, they want to look through everything, you know. Now, I don't know if this was after the bag check or before it. I guess it was after. There's also a coffee place right by the entrance where you're waiting to get in. So Scooter said, okay, let's do this here uh, because there's long lines to go through. the. Uh, they call it a rope drop, right? I talk about this. This is the most important thing, Ray says. Get there five, 45 minutes before it opens, and you could do a lot of things. So... We had a plan. Our plan was, and as I'm thinking this out and remembering, as I'm telling you, so Scooter and I had the bag, and his daughter and her mother, they split up and they headed to rope drop to be at the front of, as far, close to the front of the thing as they could get. And we were going to go on Frozen at 9 o'clock was when the park opens. So then Scooter and I, you know, got to wait in the line to get your bag checked. Then we waited in line to get uh, some uh, coffees because they had a coffee place, uh, like a little coffee kiosk. And we said, okay, we'll be on the left side of Spaceship Earth. That's a big golf ball you see on all the marketing materials. It's called Spaceship Earth, which we're on technically, I guess. You know, here, all of us together. So we waited in line. Oh, so then everybody's lined up uh, because this, when you do rope drop at, uh, and it'll be different in the future when you're hearing this maybe. But so at the time of this recording or a year ago when we were there, when you do the rope drop, there's three popular rides that get the most lines. There's the frozen ride with Anna and Elsa. There's Test Track, which is more of a faster attraction, and then there's Soarin', which is a more... Uh... Now, Anna and Elsa and Soarin', most everybody could go on. Though Soarin's not everybody's cup of tea. And then Test Track is more of a fast woo-woo ride. So you, you kind of got to pick one of those three rides to go on before the lines start to grow. Though if you're efficient, then you can, as you'll see. So our plan was to go on Anna and Elsa. Because like we had said earlier, we had tried to go on it once already and we were not were not able to do so. And that's another thing about these trips. You got to be flexible. So then, so we were trying to find Scooter's daughter. Uh, and then Scooter said, well, Ray, I got to go to the restroom. So I'll meet you right here. And there was like a plant uh, out in front of the restroom kind of towards the end of the line. So I sat there with the coffees and Scooter used the restroom. And then Scooter sat by me and we drank some coffee. And again, it was a wait uh, to get, you know, we, we got in pretty early there. So we were waiting because then they walk into the park at like whatever, 845. And then we said, where, where is everybody we're meeting? And then we found them. They were right by where we were sitting. So then we were uh, just drinking coffee and waiting for them to start the line. And then they walk you back and they kind of split everybody up. You say, oh, you're going to Frozen. And then people start walking fast and it can be a little intense. Uh, and then people are coming from different directions. And then, like they say, no running. But, you know, people don't listen. Holy moly. 
I mean, we walk fast, so so I guess you could say, well, you don't. And I say, well, you, I guess you're correct. You, you're correct. But we walked to Frozen. We got on Frozen with no weight. I mean, you go through the queue, so that kind of uh, slows the weight down. And then our plan was, as soon as we get off Frozen, we're going to try to go on Soarin' before the ride, that line builds up. Because uh, either of these three attractions I was talking about, after the park's open for 30 minutes, you're talking an hour, hour and a half wait for those rides sometimes, especially in the holiday season. So we went on uh, Soarin', Scooter stopped to go to the bathroom. I think the bathroom right by Soarin'. Because I don't know if there's any other bathrooms, uh, unless, uh, yeah, that would be where he probably went. Uh, and then we had a five-minute wait for that ride, which is great. Then we ate breakfast at the, um, this place is called The Land. So there's pavilions, at the time we went, there was pavilions named after stuff, right? Oh, because uh, Epcot Center has a future world and then a world showcase. So in the future world, one of the pavilions is called The Land. It's supposed to teach you about respect for the land. And the Soarin' ride is like, hey, we're flying over the world. Look at how great the world is. It's got a bunch of land. Let's friggin' treat the land nice. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we ate at a restaurant. They have like a cafeteria-style you know, restaurant, and the land is supposed to have a little bit more healthier food. Now, Scooter did not write down what we ate there, but I'm sure it was, uh, you know, pretty decent food. I'm trying to look at uh, anything else. Uh, But, yeah, we ate at the land. Then we went to Journey into the Imagination. Oh, boy, I don't know if we talked about this ever before. Scooter found a bathroom over there. And holy moly, if you're looking for a bathroom that has low traffic, Scooter has found it. At least when we recorded this, I mean, at least when we visited. So, okay, so there's the land, right? That's one place. The next place we went to is called uh, the Imagination Pavilion. Believe it or not, for a long time, I think it was sponsored by Kodak, and it's like these... uh, glass pyramids and uh you said so it used to be now i don't know who sponsors it but so it's a tribute to the imagination but so they usually had used to have like a 3d movie there honey i shrunk the kids or the audience and then they have a ride with figment about the imagination eric idol is uh the scientist or the uh, uh, bureaucrat or something but if you're facing that building uh, about to go on the journey to imagination ride and you go right to the right side of the building is a restroom and no one knows it's there i mean some people do it's not like no one's using it but for disney world holy moly because sometimes the bathroom's open 15 minutes you say what are people what were people doing in here but this one you know if you need to to, to have a quiet moment uh uh if you uh, that's all ray will say in a place that feels relatively clean, because I said, what do you, what do you, what, what, did you get any pee in the toilet? Oh my goodness. Uh, or, you know, why did you get the toilet? Like, so this bathroom, especially at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning was very uh, spotless because Disney has a, oh boy, don't get me started. You've heard me talk about this, both in Disneyland and Disney world, they lost their reputation for cleanliness uh, I mean, whenever I went to Disneyland, like a few years ago now, but Disney World as well, I say, oh, they must have done some cutbacks on the staff because you'll see paper towels everywhere. It's just not, they have that, they like to keep that image, I'm sure, but it's not true that, oh, everybody polishes everything every five minutes, Ray. I say, listen, reality called. Was that ever true or was it just an imagination? Was it just a myth the whole time? Uh, but this place will feel like it's clean. And then you then you go on the journey to the imagination. I think we found the bathroom afterwards. But the journey to imagination ride, it's a little dated. It's cute. It has figment who's a little uh, figment of someone's imagination. And he's playing around with Eric Idle. 
and it's got a nice song that's catchy. It's, I mean, I don't want to, like, uh, it, if you don't got to wait in line for it longer than 15 minutes, go on the ride. If longer than 15 minutes, your friend Ray would say, oh, boy, I don't know. And it does seem like, it, like the times we've gone, it does have a bit of a line, like it's not super efficient. Okay, then we went to, to so, and I, uh, Ray's talked about this before, so forgive me, but... Uh, so they have the World Showcase, right? It has different uh, pavilions themed after different countries. So, But then in the holiday season, not every pavilion, but a lot of them have, I think it may be every pavilion, they have performers performing something about a myth of the holiday, the holiday myth uh, or a holiday story from that nation. And I think it's Yule Nissen, uh, at uh, Norway, and it's a very funny, very well done story. It involves two performers normally, and it's very good. It's a very good story. I really like that one. So we watched that story. Great stuff. There was also a game called Agent P. This has nothing to do with the holiday season. They're replacing it, I think, with the DuckTales game that's interactive. So we went to China. And uh, we played the Agent P game there. We try to find little clues. Uh, then we went and uh, do, they also have uh, craft stations at every little nation uh, pavilion. And where you do a craft and with and they usually have a supervise like someone supervising and helping. And they call those KidCot stations. So we went to the KidCot station, which was fun. Uh, then we went and, and uh, we stopped at a place and they had cinnamon Coke, uh, which I seen, I never seen it in the Bay Area where we live. I seen it in one other place since then. And talk about a holiday treat. It was really good. I don't know what that says after cinnamon Coke, but it was, the cinnamon Coke was very, very good. Oh, cinnamon Coke float, someone got. I think that's what that says. Uh, Interesting. But yeah, the cinnamon Coke by itself is good. I don't know what the cinnamon Coke float tasted like. That's intriguing to me. Uh, then we went to Germany and we played more of Agent P. Really good in Germany. I don't know what they'll have for the DuckTales thing, but like where you, you're interacting with machines and things and a lot of, a lot of special effects. Uh, then... We went to uh, Italy and we watched uh, La Bella Fina perform. Now, this year, 2020, Scooter gave his mother uh, two La, La Bella Fina dolls from Etsy that he bought from a creator there. And La Bella Fina gives a show where she talks about uh, La Bella Fina and Italy. And me, I don't want to ruin it for you. You should go see it. Then they also have a pizza window that's not always open in the back of Italy. Like I said, I think the last time we went, we went at dinner time, and they don't have it open. But this was lunchtime, so we went there, and oh boy, was it good. Now, Scooter has like a lot of, uh, oh, I think because it was out of order here. Okay, that makes sense. Now I understand. So that's interesting to me. So I just, just sorry about that. I'm looking at Scooter's notes here. So we watched Bellafina, and then Scooter got a, a, a slice of pizza. And the pizza there is very good, Scooter said. It's not New York style. It's a square slice, and you can get roni or non I don't know. Usually they have two or three choices. And, uh, I don't know, so it's very messy. So I remember Scooter, you know, getting him to sit down is like an effort. He'll watch the show, but I think the Bellafina show had already ended. And I said, can you sit down with that pizza police? Like, it's going to, like, you know, I can't have you dripping grease all over my, my theme park here. So we sat down, we had some pizza, which was nice. So then we walked to France, uh, and La pa I don't know how you say this, La Père? Like, so they have the La pa oh, Papa Noel, that La Papa Noel. And uh, 
it, Le Papa Noel was a little show and another holiday show. And that's another good one. And I'm just trying to think because there's another good show in France uh, that's not related to the holidays that we'll probably talk about another time. Uh, but uh, we, we enjoyed that show. Papa Noel is very cute. Uh, not as good as Jules Nissen, but... Uh, or Père Noël, I don't know what, it, I, but I think Papa Noël would make sense. But very good storytellers. This is where I would say, if you lose these things, Disney, it would be a shame. I'm just saying, these professional performers, uh, treat them well, please. Uh, they also have an ice cream place, a glacier artiste or something, like an ice cream place in, in, in uh, France there. And Scooter got the uh, gingerbread ice cream, which he said was not good. Uh, I, mean, I think he means, like, not great. Like, maybe just not enough gingerbread flavor. And I would say, yeah, the up against it's a tough one because you got, like, a, like the almost gingerbread ice creams now. Or with, like, that cookie, biscotti cookie or whatever. Or the Disney, or what is it called, Trader Joe's... Uh, cookie butter like those are gingerbready type flavors so maybe scooter was expecting something like that or maybe he meant uh oh boy so that's where we went out of order so i'll i'll okay then or maybe he meant the pastrami on rye was not good which would make sense so that must have been his lunch or his dinner it was a little tiny thing from one of the food stands and I think maybe I'm remembering it. I th I had some of it. I think it was just a little bit like uh, I don't know if you really want to eat a, a, a like a, a pastrami on rye. It really comes down to the bread. And is it uh, because sometimes if the bread is dried out, which is the case in this one, like uh, it's just not going to be as good. It, like it really depends on a marriage of the bread. The pastrami, which also maybe doesn't, you know, especially in a please everybody type situation, might be a little lean where you need it. Uh, you need a pillow, pillowiness uh, to the rye and then a fattiness uh, to the pastrami along with uh, like a generous supply of mustard uh, for it to, to taste good. So I think that was probably what was not good. So then we went to, we'll, we'll have to back up, uh, before we, before we went to France, uh, we went, or before, yeah, before we went to France, we went to the American Adventure, which was not working, but we did stay for the carolers and Scooter said that the caroler, he was like, oh boy, like the carolers, the only problem was they, they made some eye contact with Scooter. And smiled at him, and that kind of he said, what they, why, "Why, like, uh, Ray? I can't handle this. Just please, just sing." But they were beautiful. Oh, what singers they have there! Uh, so that was a little bit out of order. I think that was before Papa Noel. Papa Noel. Does Papa Noel preach? Uh, then we went to Germany, and they had a little trio band. Uh, uh, Germany singers, and they were very good. They were kind of singing uh, holiday type of German t tunes in German, and Scooter enjoyed it. Uh, he, you know, he loves the performances. I also enjoyed it, but I like uh, doing some people watching as well. Uh, then we went to China, uh, and we were going to see the show at China, but it was, it was canceled, or there wasn't a show because it says China no show. Uh, then we went to, wow, we were busy here at this park. Uh, apparently we didn't take a break, I guess because we slept in there. That's interesting. I wonder, we never took a nap this day. So we got up, I mean, I guess we got up at 8.15. Oh, I guess it was because it was Christmas Eve, maybe, and we just said, look, can't stop, won't stop. But so we went to Norway so Scooter could use the restroom, and uh, which he did. Now, that's a busy restroom over there by Norway because one of the problems is you got no restrooms. So it goes uh, Mexico, 
I think they have a restroom indoors. Then, Ger- then China. No restroom in chi- at China. Uh, oh, Norway is between those two. They have a restroom uh, outdoors. I mean, not outdoors, outdoors. You know what I'm saying? Accessible from the outdoors. China, no restroom. Then they have a little open area. And then Germany, then a restroom after Germany. So they could use some more restrooms there. Then we went to Canada and got more of the maple uh, popcorn, which is a bit like uh, kettle corn, maple kettle corn popcorn, because we had the refillable popcorn thing. Which, yeah, it turns out that is definitely a bargain there. And we enjoyed that. I think I remember this. Like, Scooter sat on a bench, uh, and he, like, returned messages from patrons. I can remember this like it was yesterday. So the sun was still out. So this must have been, like, uh, after lunchtime, I'm guessing, uh and, uh, like, uh, we were just enjoying it. And it's, it's, uh, we were talking to the person that sells the timeshares while Scooter was making videos. And we were just eating popcorn because we were waiting for a show to start called The British Invasion. And this is like a cover band. Not everybody likes these things as much as Scooter's. But the people, oh, boy, the people love it. Holy moly. So this is a show I highly recommend going to just to watch the people like uh, this is a was a highlight of our trip every time we stopped at this show because our friends from the uk they love it uh it's in the uk in, in epcot center and so they they play different uh they play some beatles songs they think they play some who songs they probably play a couple other songs maybe a monkey song but people are dancing along like you would never believe it. Oh, and laughing, multi-ages, you know, three, four generations. And just so much fun watching the people dance into the live music again. This is, this is where Disney can excel, so don't miss out on this stuff. Uh, then we had had so much uh, fun that we said, let's go on that Skyliner again. So we said, let's walk over there because Epcot has a back entrance uh, where you could go out uh, and you could walk. Technically, you could walk to the boardwalk, which is, has a hotel, the boardwalk. But they also have some restaurants and a boardwalk set up there. And then they have the Yacht and Beach Club hotels, and then they have a Marriott, Swan and Dolphin. And then you could go, you could also catch a boat uh, to, to uh, Disney Studios or to any of those hotels. Uh, and that's where the Gondola Skyline, uh, there's also a station there that you could take to uh, Caribbean Beach Resort and then switch to go to the Disney Studios or whatever. And we had loved it so much, we said, okay, let's catch the Skyliner, but it was not working. So we said, huh, I guess the Skyliner, they said the Skyliner is not working. So we said, what a bummer. So we said, okay, let's go to look at the resorts of the beach club. I don't think we made it to the yacht club, but I don't believe. And I, I don't even know if they have separate lobbies. Maybe they do. I don't know. So I'm going to have to ask Scooter. Scooter, have you been to the Yacht Club yacht lobby? Because the, these two hotels, they kind of look like uh, uh, Atlantic uh, seaside resorts. Very fancy looking. The Beach Club has kind of like a bright blue. And then the Yacht Club's a more stately gray or something. And I don't know, they look like you'd go like a high class resort you'd go to in Maine or, or uh, you know, on the Cape Cod. But also, so we went there for two things. So soda for scooter, of course, but also to look at uh, and to take a break to get away from the park. So we walked there. We went in, we went in the lobby there and they have these gingerbread houses. Now, I don't know if this is new this year or was there like this in the past, but all the gingerbread houses also have hidden Mickeys on the gingerbread house. I think this was like a gingerbread carousel. And uh, so we, wa- we, we, we looked at the hidden Mickeys and the gingerbread carousel. We uh, all used the restroom there. 
Uh, then we actually sat down and drank some soda because there was like the scooter has his own limited soda cup that works at all the resorts there. And I think we bought some cookies. So we had some cookies and some soda, which was really nice. And maybe something else to drink water, hopefully. Also, we had a laugh because that's where the seafood buffet is. That's Suguda when he goes with his extended family. They always want to eat there. And he says, well, I'm allergic to shellfish and everything he has steamed in shellfish. Uh, and they say, okay, well, you could sacrifice. But, but Scooter, you know, he, you know how he can be. So, uh, so we had some soda and then we said, okay, well, what are we going to do now? What should we do next? Because it was like, uh, I don't know what time it was. I'm guessing around two or three o'clock because I can kind of remember it, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Probably like around two or three o'clock. The sun was still out. I don't think it was raining at this point. And then we said, okay, well, let's take a bus to the animal kingdom uh, let's not go home. Let's just ride this out there. And so that's what we did. And then the next time I talk to you, like, uh, we'll be on our way. We'll be waiting for the bus uh, to the, ma- the animal kingdom. Uh, thanks everybody. And, uh, good night. This is your friend Ray. So good to be in your ears again. Good night. All right. I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently. Samantha, Neil, and Becca. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Christy, Demi, and Infinite. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Elaine, Sam, and Meredith. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Dana, Max, and Nicholas. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Marlos, uh, Jenna. And Carrie, thank you, thanks, 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 good night. Julia, Jasmine, and Lynette, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Karina, Claire, and Allison, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Allison, Sean, and Neil, thank you, thanks, 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 good night. Amanda and Sarah, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Calio and Nicole, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, thanks, thanks everybody for supporting the show. Uh, Sleeping Week is able to be here as a free podcast because of people like the people I just mentioned that support the show directly on Patreon or who support the show, uh, by, um, like, uh, supporting the sponsors and letting the sponsors know about it. You can also support the show for free by spreading the word, it, it, ideally just about podcasting in general. People will find their way to sleep with me if they know about podcasts and they're comfortable using a podcast app. So just show people in your life, uh, you'd be surprised. And you do have to soft sell it and say, hey, let me see your what podcast you listen to. Oh, well, and that's what do those cost money or what a pain. And say, well, let me just show you your web phone. Oh, okay. You know, you could listen on this or that for totally free. Hey, do you know, you're, I know you're a fan of uh, those, uh, you know, scratch and sniff sni- stickers. Uh, so that then people will find Sleep With Me. You could also join our referral program at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. And that's another way to help the show out. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, I just want to let you know about one more thing. Uh, good night.